Hello, we are going to start module two, types of motions. In this module, we are going to see the rectilinear motion, the circular motion and other motions resulting from the composition of some of those studied up to this point. Finally, as usual, we will apply what we have learned. In the introduction, we will make a brief classification of types of motions. This introduction will be made based on the trajectory or the relationship that exists between the distance traveled and time. We can categorize the different types of motions to which an object can be subjected by considering the trajectory. In this case, we discuss rectilinear motion or curvilinear motion. As a specific case of curvilinear motion, we will study circular motion. Alternatively, we can categorize them based on the relationship between the distance traveled s and time t. In this scenario, we refer to uniform motion or varied motion. A particular case of varied motion is uniformly varied motion. To help us understand the different concepts necessary in this module, Jay is going to help us. In this case, he has set aside basketball and hopped on his skateboard. We see that the trajectory followed by J is a straight line trajectory. Well, the trajectory is going to give us information of the normal component of the acceleration. In a rectilinear motion, we see that the tangent vector has a constant direction and therefore its derivative with respect to time will be zero. We can also reason starting from the radius of curvature, since in every rectilinear motion, the radius of curvature will be infinite, and consequently, the normal acceleration is zero. Let's consider that the normal acceleration provides information about the change in direction experienced by the velocity vector. In this case, there is no change of direction. Then we have seen that in all rectilinear motion, the normal acceleration is zero. Now, let's observe how J moves. We notice that he does it differently, and we will analyze the existing differences. Well, J hasn't moved in a straight line, but has instead followed a curvilinear trajectory. What differences exist with the previous trajectory? Well, in the drawing, we see that the tangent vector no longer has a constant direction. And therefore, its derivative with respect to time is different from zero. It is also observed that in curvilinear motion, the radius of curvature takes a finite value. Therefore, the normal acceleration is different from zero. This indicates that the velocity vector will be changing direction, and hence, the normal acceleration as well. A particular case of curvilinear motion is the circular motion. In a circular motion, it is fulfilled that the radius of curvature is constant and equal to r, the radius of the circumference, and the expression of the normal acceleration is v squared divided by r. In conclusion, Every curvilinear motion will exhibit a non-zero normal acceleration, and in the specific case of circular motion, its magnitude will be v squared divided by r. The normal acceleration vector will be a vector directed towards the interior of the curvature and will be perpendicular at any point to the tangent to the trajectory. Let's look now not only at the trajectory that J follows, but also at the time it takes to pass from one cone to another. Well, we see that it takes two seconds to travel two meters, so it has a velocity of one meter per second. Now we are going to analyze the motion based on the relation that exists between the distance traveled and time. To do this, we will consider the tangential component of acceleration. We have seen 
that since it maintains a constant velocity, its variation with respect to time will be zero. So the tangential acceleration will also be zero. Which relation will allow us to see the relationship between the distance traveled and time. Let's start with the expression that relates velocity to the distance traveled. We separate variables and perform the integration between the initial instant, which we'll take as zero and any instant t. During these moments, we'll consider the value of the distance traveled at each of them. By integrating, we obtain the expression shown in the slide, and ultimately, we derive the relationship between the distance traveled and time, where s sub zero and v sub zero are the initial conditions. We have observed that in uniform motion, the tangential acceleration is zero, the velocity is constant, and the distance traveled has an expression that correlates with time as shown in the lower part of the slide. Let's see in this case what happens to it. J starts from a standstill and will acquire a velocity of one meter per second, which he will maintain. Then at the start, the velocity is not constant and therefore the tangential acceleration will be different from zero we will be dealing with varied motion. A particular case of varied motion is constituted by uniformly varied motions. In this case, the tangential acceleration is constant. If it has a positive value, it will be an accelerated motion, meaning the velocity will increase. Conversely, if the tangential acceleration is negative, less than zero, it will be a decelerated motion, meaning the velocity will decrease. Well, let's now derive the expression that relates the distance traveled to time. To do this, we'll begin with the expression that relates tangential acceleration to the change in velocity, as shown in the slide. If we separate variables, and we integrate between an initial instant t equal to zero and any instant t, taking into account the values of the velocity. At those instants, we perform the integration and obtain the expression of the velocity as a function of time, where v sub zero is the initial value of the velocity, and a sub t is the value of the tangential acceleration, which in this case is constant. To find the expression between the distance traveled and time, we will take into account the relationship that exists between these two quantities. We need to consider that now we have to substitute the velocity with the expression we obtained earlier. Once again, we separate variables and perform the integration between the initial instant and any instant t, and finally, we obtain the relationship between the distance traveled and time. S sub zero and V sub zero are the initial conditions, and A sub T is the value of the tangential acceleration, constant in this case. Thus, in all varied motion, the tangential acceleration is different from zero. And as a specific case, we have examined uniformly varied motion in which the acceleration is constant. The velocity depends on time, and the distance traveled does as well. The relationship between velocity and time is seen in the second equation, and the relationship between the distance traveled and time is seen in the equation below. To conclude, we will make a brief summary of what we have studied in this class. We have seen that when considering the trajectory of a mobile object, we talk about rectilinear motion, in which case the normal acceleration is zero, or curvilinear motion, in which case the normal acceleration is different from zero. We have explored a specific case, which is circular motion. 
If we focus on the relationship between the distance traveled and time, we discuss uniform motion and varied motion. A particular case of varied motion is uniformly varied motion. In uniform motion, the tangential acceleration is zero, while in uniformly varied motion, the tangential acceleration is constant. From these two conditions, we have obtained the expressions which in each case relates the velocity and the distance traveled with time for uniform motion and uniformly varied motion. Well, with this, we have finished the class. See you in the next session.